Hey everyone, it's Matt aka Tech Ranger, and today we'll be taking a look at Starfield and some settings that I think you all should know about, mainly if you're coming back to the game or haven't played it in a while. There was the Fallout TV show and the Fallout 4 Next Gen update, so there was a lot going on at the time, but there was also a pretty big Starfield update. So I wanted to take a look at some of these settings because I've been playing a lot of the game lately. Settings that I think not everybody knows about because they were maybe added in an update before this one and can be pretty important if you're starting a new game or coming back to the game. But with all that said, if you guys enjoy the video, leave a like. Are there things in Starfield that you'd like me to showcase? Let me know in the comments down below. With that out of the way, let's take a look at these settings, show them off a little bit, just to show you how much they can really impact your game. So brightness and contrast is one of those settings that doesn't sound that big on paper, but when you actually use it and change things, it makes a pretty big difference. And it can be the difference between looking at something like this and then this. So up in the contrast here, increasing the difference between the light and dark areas in the image can change the look of the game substantially. It's important to note that Starfield does have a lot of different areas with different lighting and lighting conditions, so this can vary depending on where you're at. So you might want to pick an outside spot to change the setting at first, then going into an interior like your ship, and then adjusting from there. On the note of those special cases, another thing to mention with the brightness and contrast is what kind of monitor you're using. So if you're using something like an IPS monitor that we've looked at here on the channel, those monitors are brighter and more colorful. However, that backlight might shine through a little bit more than on something like an Asus monitor that we've looked at that has a VA panel that has a higher contrast. So those settings will look different on either of those monitors. But it's something to mess around with and if you just like the default look then by all means just keep that but if you want to tune things a little bit this is the way you can do it now this next setting is field of view and we're all pretty familiar with field of view we've looked at mods for like skyrim and fallout on console and we've seen what fov can do to the game however in this game it's a little bit different because the fov is actually three different settings we'll show all of these here in this segment but you actually get to it from the accessibility menu you'd think it'd be the display menu but it's not it's accessibility now the standard fov in this game is 70 which is pretty low i mean that's the standard for like fallout and skyrim well for console at least but i would definitely recommend changing it i like 90 it seems like a pretty good middle ground but you can also go really high like 100 110 it's the highest it'll go you get that fish eye look you can also apply this to your third person camera as well and you can even have like a lower one and the first person higher one in third person one thing i thought was pretty cool is if you make it like 110 for example there's like two different third person cameras so when you hit the view button a second time you'll actually go back further so you can actually see a lot with that 110 of v i like to use this view sometimes in cities and then also when I'm running around planets. But yeah, you can also apply the FOV to the ships as well. So when you're in space, the 70 FOV is like really close. It's almost like you're in a cockpit. So I definitely recommend changing that one if you only change one FOV setting. That might not be super helpful if you're in space and you're trying to see a bunch of ships around. Better if you have a higher FOV because you can see more around. Slightly different in this game with the three settings, but let me know in the comments down below what kind of FOV you're running with Starfield. So the performance and visual mode toggle, and that's just the Xbox Series X for now. This is a game changer for me because I went from playing the game at 30 frames per second on the Xbox and now doubling that with these settings. We tried the GeForce Now on a Mac and I was able to play the game at 60, but I had only bought a month at the time. So when I went back and played Starfield on the Xbox, my save was there, but I still had to deal with the 30 frames per second on the Xbox Series X, but not anymore. We now have a visual toggle and a performance toggle. The performance mode is actually going to target a lower resolution. Change the lighting a little bit, but you can push 60. You can set that as your frame rate target, similar to the latest Fallout 4 update. And then the visuals mode is just going to push 4K more and then also improve the lighting. While you can target 60 FPS with the visuals mode, you are going to notice more frame rate dips, especially in places like New Atlantis or Aquila City. Even with performance mode at 60 FPS, Aquila City especially seems to drive the most for me. Usually it's when you're passing through this area here where it starts to drag. And while there is a difference between the two modes in terms of resolution, when you're outside like this, it's not that big of a deal. Character interactions and interiors are probably going to be where you'll notice it the most. Now, if you have a variable refresh rate display with 120 hertz, you can have a 40 FPS target here because 120 is divisible by 40. And there's really no reason not to push the visuals mode here. Whenever you switch the mode like this, the lighting will actually change in the game 
game because it needs to catch up with the change in frame rate. This would be something that I would maybe suggest if you just want a stable frame rate throughout. It seems like the cities perform a lot better. For this, I think it's great that the option is there, especially if you're not too keen on 60 FPS, but just wanted something a little bit more than the base game. But there is an uncapped option as well. Now to show this, I have to go potato mode. You can actually turn on this uncapped option, which will actually improve the frame rate here in Aquila City, for example. You'll still see some dips here and there though. So this is a really great option because areas like New Atlantis, well, depending on where you are in New Atlantis, will actually perform better. And then also interiors where it's going to really perform well, especially when you're in combat. Now the 4K monitor I have can only do 4K at 120 hertz. It can't do 1440p, but I do also have a monitor with 1440p, 120 hertz, which actually seems to perform the best. So let me know in the comments what mode you're going to pick. And now there's those new difficulty and gameplay options, which was added in this last update. And there's a ton of options. You can even go like pretty close to survival mode if you want to. But there are things like changing the enemy ship damage, player ship damage. If you want to increase the difficulty on something, you'll get more XP from it. And then even changing some of the mundane, maybe not so great aspects of the game at launch, like carry capacity. One of the things I change is the positive and negative sustenance. That basically means that food has a purpose now. Not only can it heal you and keep you fed, but it also has a negative effect. So it kind of changes it up a little bit, maybe like a survival light for me, but you can go as crazy here as you want and you will get a little bit of an XP buff if you decide to up one or the other. One of the other cool options here is your affliction treatment and prognosis. So you get conditions in Starfield if you're running around a hostile environment, like kind of planet. So those items that you pick up that treat these things, they become a little bit more valuable. A lot of great stuff here. Definitely recommend changing at least one of these settings just to add a little bit more to the gameplay when you start a new game, especially if you're coming back. So this might be one of my favorite new settings that was just added to the game, and that is the dialogue camera. So if you're familiar with games like Fallout 3 and Skyrim, whenever you got into a conversation with somebody, you'd be looking dead on straight at them. It was like that in Starfield at the launch of this game, but this dialogue camera option, you can actually turn it off. So if you don't want to be all up in somebody's face when you're talking to them, you can still do that, but you'll be like separated from them. So it won't be like you're staring directly into their eyes. <laughs> This was a requested feature for the game and I didn't really know I wanted it until I saw it. I think this is one that's definitely worth checking out if you weren't already aware of. It really does change the way the conversations play out and while you're not gonna be able to run away from a conversation unless you press B, it just seems like you have a lot more freedom in the conversation. And that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you. If this is your first time playing Starfield in a little bit, there was a few settings that I kind of forgot that was added. And then because I wasn't playing at the time, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. That one's there. And also the obvious one, the target frame rate, which is massive for the Xbox Series X console. So as I said in the beginning of this video, if there's anything you guys want me to showcase from Starfield, let me know in the comments. I plan on trying to build out the Starfield playlist here on the channel. And then down the line, obviously the Starfield mods on console. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.